So all the best YouTubers have a saw running vest, so I've decided to get one. I've also got my Nike one. How much do you think the saw one was? I think all the best YouTubers, what a load of old baloney. I'm not, don't spin me a yarn and a half. This thing, I know because you told me, was 75 quid, but you didn't tell me till after we did the last little escapade of YouTube. Can I just say to all your lovely followers, bit of old toot and a load of old con, this thing, I know because I picked up on it, was 30 some odd pound in the sale, and that was plenty enough for what, quite frankly, is a bit of dishcloth. But the belief you have that because this is seven grams lighter or something, that you're going to run faster, my beloved husband, you're not. You're not because you're nearer to 60 than you are to 40. This is not going to make any difference. If it makes you, if it makes you feel better psychologically, Great. Mm. 75 quid, honestly. Hold on to your money, boys. Mm. So do you think it saw me coming? They absolutely saw you coming, and that was Mummy's joke. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Okay, welcome to Paper Court Sailing Club. Now, I haven't come to do sailing, I've come out to test a saw vest and do another shoe off. Now, a saw vest is like the de-rigger of YouTube uh, sort of influencer kit, isn't it? Everyone seems to need to have one to run a race, or if they don't have one of them, they have to get a Trucksmith one or a Sky. as someone said the other day, seems to endorse a different one every day. So I'm not actually going to be endorsing a saw kit today. I've actually bought this with my own money for £75. So I wanted to test out whether it's actually any good. And also, if you saw my video the other day I did a test of the Endorphin Elite against the Vaporfly 3 so I feel like I would need to do another test on like a more of a flatter road course so I've got a three mile loop here on perhaps one of the flattest loops I can think of around where I live and then I'm going to do that sort of about marathon pace first of all in the Endorphin Elite wearing the saw vest and then I'm going to swap over to the Vaporfly go into my pink Aeroswift vest here which is usually my sort of favourite one, either this or the yellow one, or the orange one if I'm delivering leaflets and see how we go. And then I'm going to finish it off if I get time in the daylight to do about a mile and a bit at a bit faster pace, maybe down to 10k speed. This is a shoe off circuit I've actually used before, so it'll be interesting to see how my sort of fitness compares as well. So how am I going to test out the vest? Well obviously, the way they feel, this is a medium and it's 47 grams and I've washed it once because I wore it yesterday, if you saw my little shorts video on that where Sue was expecting it. But Sue's mum did sort of say, did you saw you coming? <laughs> and then Sue thought it was sore, as in, is it sore, like uncomfortable to wear? So hopefully not. It does feel quite snug, which is probably good for a racing vest. Right, so I do a little warm up and then we'll have to crack on. And then what I'll do is I'll weigh the vest before I start and at the end, see how much water, if anything, it, it is held. I don't really sweat that much and it's not actually that warm today. And I'm only going at sort of marathon pace, but yeah, it's a good effort, so should be a good test. And here are the shoes, the Vaporfly 3, the pink one, and the Endorphin Elite, the white one. Okay, so the weighing of the vests. This is the saw one, I'm expecting this to be 47, and the Nike one I'm expecting to be 55. There we go, 55. Okay, saw vest on, we're going to start at Tannery Lane here, and I've got the Endorphin Elites on as well, with the pink insolent socks. So I think I'll go for the tucking in style of vest. So I think this test is going to be much of my ability to hold marathon pace when I'm thinking about training for an 800 is about vests. I think the difference is here between the two vests are eight grams when they're dry and washed. Now I only think a stride is nine grams and you put that on your foot or if you're doing a race and you have to put a chip on your foot, that's not going to help much either with saving weight, especially those Evo ones. I think people didn't factor in that. Ones, if you put the chip on, that's going to increase the weight a bit quite a lot, isn't it? So also, I've got my uh, HRM Pro Plus Garmin heart rate strap on, which I weighed about to be about another 50 grams. So if you want to save weight around your chest, well, perhaps you shouldn't wear a trash strap and rely on optical heart rate being no good. Anyway, there's all sorts of little marginal gains, isn't there? So let's get on with this run and see how we actually do running. Okay, halfway around this first 5k, I'm pretty much bang on sub three pace, and about 650, so that's okay. It's a bit windy, well, relatively. Gonna do some trees now, so it's a bit nicer. Best feels all right, slightly snug if anything, but uh, nice to be aero. And the endorphin elites are doing well. Pretty much actually better on a flight course than the other night on a heady one. Okay, endorphin elite style. Let's weigh the saw vest now then. 50 grams, so it's basically gained three grams. Let's just try that again. 
does feel slightly damp. Yeah, there we go, 50 grams. It's gained three grams, not bad. It's still lighter than the dry Nike one. Okay, so just walking back to the start of the 5K loop to get the Vaporfly 3s done. I see I've got my pink Aeroswift Nike top on and I've also got the matching pink socks, not Nike socks though, with the pink Vaporfly 3s. So that was a good effort, that one. It felt like it was sort of hard and good job I'm not doing a marathon tomorrow because it felt like hard work to maintain just sort of 650, 652. I saw a 653, but then you had a bit of slight helping wind on the last sort of half a mile. So. I think I was able just to get a little bit back so but it's a pretty much flat route as, as much as you can be just a very slight little rise somewhere but yeah good little test of a circuit actually this one I can park the car at the end of the loop as well which is quite handy right so next 5k loop what I'm going to try and do now is to run the exact same time and pace it using racing activity on the Garmin so I can do the best of test because the previous test I did with the Endorphin Elite and Vapor 3, basically I was just doing on that and feeling more concentrated from the session and just looking at the numbers later. So I'm just deliberately trying to run the same pace, but will I be able to? That's an interesting thing, because that was quite hard work, so good test of fitness as well. Okay, we've just gone through the first mile in 6.48. They feel easier slightly in the Vapor 3s. I feel that arch support is helping me to bounce along. Although I'm holding the camera up now, I'm finding this harder, so I better concentrate and see it at the end but yeah good so far good pacing as well okay vaporfly 3 5k run done let's check out how much these weigh the nike era swift ones that is apologies for the bare vest i'm not an american or in the bloody king hot summer so uh yeah but uh needs must right oh that's interesting that's gone up to 60. Is that reflecting the fact I'm working harder? But that's an increase of five. So, yeah, winter the sore vest there. You could argue that I'm a bit uh, more tired now. Right, let's get this back on. I won't change shoes to this one. I'll do the shorter rep straight into the Vaporfly 3s to save a bit of time. This is what I did last time I did this, this particular shoe off. Although it's gained five grams, it did actually feel slightly more comfortable. Maybe it's not quite as fitting, but it just feels a bit looser. I felt, if anything, that was sort of breathable the way, but I mean, to be honest, it's like no different. So why am I actually paying more for this? I'm not really sure. It's part of the test, really, but I'm not certainly getting any faster. It was quite a nice run, that one. I did actually tuck it in, by the way. And I was doing racing activity, and I was always about one or two seconds ahead. So it felt like a nice sort of pacey cruise. I almost to have had my own sort of personal pacer in front of me. And just towards the end, I started to feel the legs a bit. And that's an interesting look at the heart rate. I didn't have a look. It might have gone up, but it sort of felt like it was easier. It's kind of strange. Okay, let's do the faster one in the Vaporfly 3. So I set my watch to give me a pacing at 6.20 for the mile. So see if I can lock into that, which is probably about my 10k speed at the moment, I think. It'd be nice to think it would be nearer six minutes, but I'm not sure I even made that over 5k in my last race, did I? But I was well short with that truck race, so yeah, maybe 6.20 would be uh, more like 5k pace. <laughs> anyway, let's see how we do. Yeah, it's a bit of a tight squeeze now. Right, let's see how much the Nike one weighs. 61, so it's only gamed a gram. Okay, I think I need my torch for the last one in the Endorphin Elite. Just enough light to get around. It's a bit darker here than it is the rest of the course, so should be okay. It's only eight minutes of running. I'll take my little uh, GoPro light with me so I can see where I'm going. Okay, the Vaporfly 3s was 629. I think I saw 623 for the first mile, so must have tied up a bit at the end there. But no, not bad. I feel like I was working pretty hard there. I only walked into a tree. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been planted by my own torch. I just needed to face it the other way. Right, let's get on with this last rep then. Okay, all runs done. That was a tough one on the last one. I'm not sure the vest really made much help. Let's see how much it weighs. Nice though, nice and aero. But I mean, I think really you're talking like totally in your head sort of advantages. What's that, 50? Well, that's good. Oh, 51, 50. So it hasn't really gained any weight at all. Well, that's not bad then, is it? Okay, as it's rather dark now, as you can see, let's take a look at all the stats back home. But I would say, again, I think it's sort of like that was just a good session, actually. I was working myself quite hard there with those last 1.35 miles. I felt like I was reaching for that. But it was about 6.28, 6.29 for the mile, and then whatever it was for the last bit. So around about 6.30 miling. So yeah, take that, especially after basic 10K of marathon training without actually doing any marathon training. So yeah, interesting to see which shoe comes out best on the stats. I think, again, I've preferred the Vaporfly 3 slightly, but not much in it. And that last one, the Endorphin Elite, I don't think any shoe would have helped much. I think I was just on tired legs there. But yeah, let's have a look when we get back in. 
Okay, so just a very quick reminder of what I did. So I started the 5K from opposite the sailing club here on the corner of Tannery Lane, went up here, up Polston Lane, back down Papercourt Lane, then it turns into Tannery Lane, actually ends up in the village of Send, and then back down Send Marsh Road, and then have to go very slightly past the start to make it up to a full 5K. And then for the short to live, I basically go the other way. So I go down this little cut through road, Tannery Lane here, and then just basically the opposite direction for this short to live, which I measured at about 1.37 miles, which is just over 2K in new money. So if we look at the spreadsheet, it's rather busy. I'm not going to dwell on this too much. I thought it was interesting. I was also put on the stats. I did the exact same shoe off on the exact same course in June 2021. And that time I was doing the Adios Pro 2 against the Vaporfly 2. And it's quite interesting to me looking at this. How I was actually slightly quicker two and a bit years ago. So maybe I'm just getting older or maybe I was just feeling better that night. In this current shoe off when I was doing the Endorphin Elite against the Vaporfly 3, I was deliberately trying to target at just under sub three pace being the pace that i did in my marathon in seville so i actually was very pleased with the pacing i did 21 19 for the endorphin elite and i've got the stats here averaged 133 heart rate but as it went straight into that i thought interesting to give you this for the average for the second half which is 137 and the max 139 so it was a very steady state there very little difference between the average and the max which is always a good test and that was literally bang on just a sub three pay. So uh, it's kind of like enlightening to see uh, how much effort that was for two by 5k at the same effort I was doing in Seville in February. But obviously I'm not marathon training at the moment. But it was quite uh, reassuring that I could actually get to that speed without too much problem. But I certainly felt like I was working quite hard there. And I went into the Vaporfly 3 and I used racing activity on my Garmin 955 to actually basically control the effort within one or two seconds. I, I was always one or two seconds slightly ahead. And you can see here that I basically was able to get more or less the same speed. Now, I think it's interesting with the heart rate. Obviously, the second one, you would expect the heart rate to shoot up quite a lot. And perhaps that's interesting, the fact that it didn't really go up much higher at all. The average for the second half was just one beat higher than it was in the Endorphin Elite. And the maximum was identical. So that's tells me two things that a was pleased with my pacing and b perhaps shows shows that the vaporfly 3 is a marginal edge there for me but very very close if we look at the vests well the sort of vest started off at its uh, dry weight of 47 and the nike one at 55 and they both gained a bit i mean I, you could say that well i gained more than nike one because i was obviously sweating more after the second one and it, the temperature was about sort of 16 17 so it was quite a nice night but it was uh a typical October sort of early evening compared to a June one. So I think it's interesting here that in June, although I was going faster, I did actually get my heart rate up a couple of beats higher towards the end. And then when I went into the shorter ones, that was sort of like noticeably harder. I think it was also getting a bit dark. So in a way, it was slightly hard to see where I was going. I did have a torch with me for them. So again, I was a bit slower in those two. And I think with the Endorphin Elite, I was really actually struggling to keep up the pace. I was trying to do race and activity there. And I was really actually struggling to get to, to keep going. And so I was quite pleased the way I was able to get it within five beats. And interestingly, again, that the average heart rates here, pretty much identical. So yeah, that's interesting. So you might say, well, the endorphin leap did fine, but there was five seconds short. And that was because I was really struggling to actually keep going. So I think if I'd have really, really caned it, then to get those five seconds back, it doesn't sound much, but, you know, in a, in a mile and a bit, five seconds is quite significant. So... Yeah, um, but I think it does say that the shoe is basically very little in it. I think I just prefer the Vaporfly 3, as I said in the previous one. So what about the vest then? Well, here's the saw one. It is sort of like a quite nice meshy material. It does feel feel quite sort of fitting to me. It's a bit more snug, I think, than the, than the Nike one. Although in a way, I think I prefer the Nike one, A, because it's like the colours are more sort of like when I go out on the roads, like I've got the pink one here and I've got the the lime green one as well and I've got an orange one I always feel like I'm better seen than I was in something like this which is I guess it's a bit more like a race fest when you don't really need to be too concerned about how you're looking um but yeah I mean I think I mean obviously I was able to get the Nike one at a discount I think I got them like 38 40 pounds whereas this one was full price at 75 pounds but if I if I'd have been able to get it from Saw, they didn't have any left with the 15 percent discount so I may have been able to get it down to about 60 or so then it might be in a bit better but I think in terms of like you know a couple of grams 
I mean, in a couple of grams in a shoe, you might think that's significant, but I mean, by the time I consider I put my heart rate strap on another 50 grams, and then you also don't forget you're going to put a number on top of the vest as well. So you're going to basically like <laughs> put more around your waist in numbers and heart rate straps than you are on the vest. And yeah, I mean, I think it's a nice vest, but in terms of like, oh, it's a premium quality and it's like twice the price of a Nike one. The Nike ones are typically on sale, even though they're a recommended retail price is about 60 for them but yeah i think it's a good vest but is it really sort of justifying the price i'm not really sure i mean yes it was a bit lighter and yes it seemed to hold slightly less water but then again i was maybe doing the heat of the battle in the nike one when i was sort of most hottest so as it were <laughs> so not t too sure but anyway so i hope you like my little sort of like examination of the two vests is this a vest that you've got or have you got the nike ones which vest do you like and as for the shoes well again another very very similar test i think i think again it was just down to my personal preference in the vaporfly 3 um, but certainly the endorphin elite is a very good shoe and although again it's so actually more expensive than the vaporfly 3 so it's another tricky one really you've got basically nike who are you know they're obviously the number one brand for for running kit and it's very hard for these other brands to basically then charge more and then be at best as good as them, you know. So I think that, that's always a tough call, I think. Anyway, hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe and all that. And see you next one then. Bye.